In this video, I'm talking about the second most common type of hearing loss, the conductive hearing loss. Coming up. Hi guys, Cliff Olson, doctor of audiology and founder of Applied Hearing Solutions in Phoenix, Arizona. And on this channel, I cover a bunch of hearing related information to help make you a better informed consumer. So if you're into that, make sure you hit that subscribe button. And don't forget to click the bell to receive a notification every time I post a new video. Generally speaking, there are three different types of hearing loss. You have a sensory neural hearing loss, a conductive hearing loss, and a mixed hearing loss, which is the combination between a sensory neural and a conductive. Now, sensory neural hearing loss is the most common type of hearing loss, with conductive hearing losses coming in at second. But to understand any of these different types of hearing loss, we first have to understand how the ear works. The ear is divided into three sections, the outer ear, the middle ear, and the inner ear. The outer ear contains the pinna and the ear canal. The middle ear contains the eardrum, the three middle ear bones, also known as ossicles, the middle ear space, and the eustachian tube. The inner ear contains the cochlea, otherwise known as our hearing organ, the three semicircular canals that control balance, and the auditory and vestibular nerves that send information from the ear to the brain. Sound, which is a vibration, passes through the ear canal and vibrates the eardrum. That vibration then moves through the three middle ear bones to the cochlea, where this vibration is converted into a neural signal that is sent up the auditory nerve to the brain. A sensory neural hearing loss occurs when the inner ear is not functioning normally. However, a conductive hearing loss is when the vibration of sound is impeded somewhere in the outer or middle ear, preventing it from reaching the inner ear at its full intensity which is exactly why it's called a conductive hearing loss, because sound cannot be conducted effectively through this entire pathway. Conductive hearing losses can stem from the outer ear due to things like earwax, foreign bodies like cotton left over from a Q-tip, or even oral atresia, which is the absence of an ear canal. Conductive hearing losses can also be a result of a problem in the middle ear, such as a hole in the eardrum, fluid in the middle ear space, eustachian tube dysfunction, otosclerosis, which is a fusion of the middle ear bones, or even ossicular chain discontinuity, which is where the middle ear bones are not properly connected or aligned. When diagnosing a conductive hearing loss, your hearing care professional will look for what we call an air bone gap. Here's an example of an air bone gap on an audiogram. The X's and O's represent your hearing sensitivity as sound passes through all three parts of your ear, including the outer ear, the middle ear, and the inner ear via air conduction. The angle and square brackets on an audiogram represent the hearing sensitivity of your inner ear only via bone conduction, hence the term air bone gap. If there is no gap between your air and bone conduction thresholds, then you do not have a conductive hearing loss. If you have a significant gap between these thresholds, then it is likely that you do have a conductive hearing loss. When performing a hearing evaluation, your hearing care professional will typically start with air conduction testing, which is what will give us those X's and O's on the audiogram. This is where we either place headphones over your ears or earphones inside of your ear canals and present beeps that you have to respond to by either raising your hand or clicking a button. After air conduction testing, we typically transition to bone conduction testing to get the brackets on the audiogram. This is where we place a bone oscillator on your skull's mastoid bone behind your ear and present the same beeps that we did through the headphones. This vibration of your mastoid bone will stimulate your inner ear directly, completely bypassing the outer and middle ear. Again, the resulting brackets on your audiogram represent the hearing sensitivity of your inner ear only, where the X's and O's represent your hearing sensitivity if sound has to pass through all three parts of your ear. Now there are some other tests like tympanometry that a hearing care professional can use to identify what is causing your conductive hearing loss, but that is a topic for an entirely different video. Okay, now you should have at least a decent grasp of what a conductive hearing loss is, so let's go ahead and take a look at how a conductive loss is treated. Ultimately, the treatment for a conductive hearing loss is different than the treatment for a sensory neural hearing loss in that a conductive hearing loss usually requires medical intervention. For outer ear causes like earwax, removal via curette, suction, or irrigation may be performed. If there's a foreign body inside of your ear canal, it may require extraction using forceps or for more serious situations, even surgery. And an outer ear infection may require medication prescribed by a physician. 
For middle ear conditions like fluid behind the eardrum, you may require medication and in some cases a myringotomy, which is when a physician will make a tiny little incision inside of your eardrum in order to relieve pressure and drain that fluid. And for conditions like otosclerosis or ossicular chain discontinuity, surgery may be required to address the dysfunction of the three middle ear bones. If medical intervention does not completely correct your conductive hearing loss, you still have treatment options. In some cases, traditional hearing aids are enough to overcome this conductive hearing loss, but in other cases, it may require a bone-anchored hearing aid. The reason a bone-anchored hearing aid works so well for conductive hearing losses is that it directly stimulates the inner ear hearing organ, the cochlea, with bypassing the outer and middle ear space. Now, if you'd like to learn more about bone-anchored hearing aids, feel free to check out my videos that I have on my channel which I will also link in the description. At the end of the day, it is extremely critical to precisely understand which type of hearing loss that you have because this will dictate which type of treatment is right for you. And this is another reason why I do not recommend having your hearing tested online because it is literally impossible for you to understand if you have a sensorineural hearing loss or a conductive hearing loss. So do yourself a favor. If you have any difficulty hearing whatsoever, make sure that you have your hearing tested by a hearing care professional so they can accurately identify which type of hearing loss that you have. After all, a conductive hearing loss that is not properly treated can lead to more serious medical conditions down the road. That's it for this video. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below. If you like the video, please share it. If you want to see other videos just like this one, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Also, feel free to check out my website, drcliffaud.com.